Hello, Carol. TV recap madness is sweeping the viewing world with new websites devoting a lot of pixels to instant cliff notes and analysis of shows with serious followings like AMC's Breaking Bad that you were just watching there. What are the challenges of writing such pieces in a TV culture that's undergoing major transition? We've got John Jurgensen, our entertainment reporter, along with Daniel Menu, site director at Television Without Pity, one of the first websites to popularize recaps. Thanks so much for joining it's us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. John, let me get you jumping here. Just for the uninitiated, how is a recap different than a traditional review? Uh, a recap is something that follows the series week to week, episode by episode. So it's not just weighing in on how the, the site is being set up for the season. It's blow by blow each week for mostly for fans of the show or watchers of the show, who may not even be fans, um, to, to kind of dig into the analysis of each episode, sometimes in a sarcastic way, sometimes in a very serious, methodical way. Dan, from, from doing this now and being sort of one of the pioneers here, why do people, people who don't recaps may not under, read recaps may not understand why people would want to sort of read something they just saw. What is it about the culture that brings people in? Well, I think television's become so incredibly compelling that it's not enough to just watch the show. You want to see what other people think. You want to uh, share your opinions with other people. And the recap is a perfect platform for writers to express their thoughts on top of a show and then for readers to see what other people uh, are finding, the nuggets they're analyzing about a show, and then also to respond themselves in comments or right. even create their own recaps because now technology allows anybody really to be a recapper. It's a digital water cooler. Exactly. In, in a sense. That's exactly what it is. So what do you guys think, Dan, start with you, what makes a popular recap? I mean, is it besides the show itself just being very popular? Well, I think it's, a, it's two things. It's the quality of the writing, the quality of the pros. You have to be a good writer to be a really great recapper, I think. And also it's about having a either incredible insight into the show, finding things that aren't necessarily obvious to everyone watching, or it's about having a good sense of humor and having a lot of fun with the show. Uh, a lot of our recaps are either very serious, they're finding really in-depth sort of alleyways to talk yeah. about, or they're very funny, very sarcastic, very snarky, and they're really making fun in a lot of ways of what's happening on the show, which is a part of the viewing culture. Sometimes we watch things just to laugh at it. John, you talk to a lot of writers out there who pen these recaps about some of the, the trickiness of doing this, including right. living in the Netflix world where sometimes you can watch an entire an entire season comes out all at once. What do they tell you what's hard about this yeah, job? Well, the rhythms of TV are really being disrupted now. So um, the, the week by week aspect of, of doing these shows is out the window when it comes to some of these Netflix shows. So the recapper who uh, may be analyzing Orange is the New Black, which is a very popular show right now on Netflix, has to sort of pace him or herself through the show and not get too far ahead of themselves. And in a sense, they're speaking not just to the viewer who just watched the episode that the recapper did, but the viewer who may have been watching five episodes ahead and is reading back to look for clues that they might have missed. So it's kind of a web of, of narrative that they have to keep track of. Um, but I think Dan's, Dan's point is really strong here that the, that the voice is the most important part and the insights they make. And what about Defiance, Dan? I mean, how has that recap been for you guys? For the, this is a show, Defiance, on your yeah, site. Yeah, Defiance is a show that aired on Sci-Fi uh, earlier this season. It's coming back next season. And it's an example of the kind of show that does very well for us in the recap format. It was a serial drama, uh, meaning it's not a procedural. It's not about solving the case every week. It had very strong characters. It had a very complex uh, sort of storyline. And it was science fiction. And all those elements tend to do very well, for us at least, and in general online, I think, uh, in the recap format. Scandal was one you said. Uh, you, I think you told John, you said you wish you could have a do-over when right. it came to the show Scandal. Why was that? Well, I mean, it just sort of took off in ways nobody expected. You know, if we'd known how buzzworthy it would have been, of course, we'd have been covering it from day one. And also, frankly, the show evolved from season one to season two. It started out very kind of procedural. Procedurals don't do well in the recap format. It started out, the main character, Olivia Pope, sort of had a client every week uh, that she had to uh, sort of help or fix. Uh, then it became much more of a soap opera. If it had started that way from the beginning, I think we would have been more likely to have covered it from day one. All right, well, you can get a recap of this show, yes. this segment, and John's story in the arena <laughs> section tomorrow. It'll be in a lengthier form. Thanks so much, Dan. Thank Appreciate you so much. It. Thanks, John, as Thank always. Thank you.